if the same 50 doctors, the exact same x-ray, all 50 of them come out with a different diagnosis. So it's not that I, I, I have a really difficult time believing that the medical industry is inherently biased against women. Um, I, I, one, one example I could think of for why it's perceived that way is a lot of this data has to be just personal accounts, personal feeling from the patients themselves. Generally speaking, if I were to take a wild guess, I would say men probably are going to complain about their care a little less than women will. And pursue medical attention in general. Yeah, exactly. So the, the statistics would be skewed towards women suggesting they get less adequate care than men because men probably just won't care as much as women will. So that, that, that could easily explain why um, it seems like the healthcare system is more biased towards men than it is women. Okay. Yeah. I just, yeah, and yeah. I think that you're, I agree with parts of your argument, I do. I think that you've made a lot of valid points tonight, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm just still trying to hear something where what? women are discriminated against. I mean, okay, what about of the, just in the long, hundreds of years ago when like psychology was like first like starting and how like easily women would get committed for things that were called hysteria. I guess I would want to That's, see the rates at which women were. Well, they committed. weren't. They, I mean, they you were usually just, you treated for hysteria sad. a different way. You could just be way. sad and then get tossed in a <laughs> well, crazy okay. loony well, bin. Usually, for, usually know, female hysteria was treated with masturbation. Yeah, and, and also, yeah, so, electroshock, things like not, that. Not yeah, committal, but you're not, you don't necessarily was, need yeah, that. Committal cause... was due to other factors generally, not due to hysteria. Right. So the thing is, is with with what you what you consider that's hysteria that's a specific say. thing right uh, yeah i get that but that was like my example of saying that that's that was things like just sadness or depression that could be cured by not having to be sent to a loony bin and getting more crazier men were that's, also that sent to loony bins that when they were crazy that whole idea mm -hmm. of i know well, what you guys were again, touching on earlier just like andrew just said things. that's it's selective you're choosing which anecdotes to pay attention to and choosing which ones to not pay attention to. Men also suffered from being thrown in loony bins for less than ideal reasons. So it's not an evidence. It's not an evidence of the patriarchy hurting, oppressing women in particular. It's just saying that a long time ago, when technology wasn't as good and people weren't as knowledgeable about these things. People got shafted, and none of those things. And it doesn't at matter whether it's a woman or a man; it just happens because people weren't as smart. Yeah, but none of those ideas at all got like passed down generationally, little bit by bit, turned into whatever well, version. It none is of today. that. None like, of this it's is not based as deep as it was. Yeah, none of that, that is that based time. on sexism, though. None of it's based on patriarchy. It's just based on we but weren't was... medically as adept. Therefore, men <clears throat> and women got the raw deal i mean it was mostly husbands of of women like that would send them i, I would want to see your rates of I, yeah, go you gotta happening. be pulling this shit out yeah, yeah there's like not. no way well, i don't know I'm like not. essentially uh, it I just mean, sounds there like there is there is some there is some truth to the fact that there is a there was a larger committal of women generally than men into a lot of these psychiatric hospitals however try to remember that uh, psychology itself is a soft science yeah, and at exactly. the point in time that you're talking about it was literally pseudoscientific yeah. they were giving people lobotomies they were poking holes in their but, head they were doing all sorts of immoral experimentation yeah but generally it was not husbands who were doing um you know kind of these overtly committals this Your was parents. um women women who were considered the leftovers so these mm -hmm. were women who uh um, outcasted or they used no, no, no. They used to have houses for women. They were they were basically halfway houses mm -hmm. for women who got pregnant out of marriage, things like this. Yeah. They were the, kind of the dregs of society. And they would be mostly pulled from them because a lot of them actually were mentally ill. And yeah, a lot of them did get experimented on. That's true. But this is, uh, this is again, I'm no fan of psychology and I'm no fan of psychiatry. Yeah. I think that it's a, a pseudoscientific pursuit. My, okay, so I back would've... back to you. So... Uh, I still really haven't heard a compel like anything compelling when it comes to women discriminated against.
I would say that I provided you with the examples that first come to mind for me. Those are the biggest ones in my opinion. I know that you pulled up data that disproves that. I understand that, right? Well, so there, yeah, there's the wage gap, there's the yeah. healthcare thing. Um, I mean, couldn't I just, you know, because feminism is a game of comparison. Mm. Men are privileged, women aren't. Men are oppressors, women are oppressed. I, we, men have more rights. That is feminism. It is comparing not men to women. Feminism. Hold on. So I could just return back to you. I'll just engage you on the healthcare thing. Let's talk about healthcare. Upon birth, men have their genitals mutilated. Healthcare, right? Bye. Secondly, uh, if you look at who the cohort of people where uh, experimental medications experimental procedures are tested on, this is overwhelmingly men. And feminists will actually turn this around and say, for example, well, all these experimental procedures, they're tested on men, so they, men fare better. But it's not clear to me if it's some sort of male privilege or advantage for you as a man to be, a lot of these men are paid for this. Wouldn't that actually be evidence of uh, men faring worse that they are resorting to have, having experimental drugs and having experimental procedures done on them for money because they're so desperate for money, you can experiment medically on me. So given the case that, for example, just those two examples I gave mm -hmm. you, that there's male genital, genital mutilation on most men in this country upon birth, excuse me, most boys, and that there's uh, the, in terms of the, in terms of the distribution, there's much more men who are experimented on medically than women. So couldn't I just turn that around on you and saying when it comes to healthcare, that men actually have these, these specific negative health outcomes? Yeah, I think that that's a valid point that you raised. When we're looking at genital mutilation, that occurs within the U.S. mainly, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not... It happens in some other countries, it but... It does, but the majority of it is occurring in the yeah. U.S. I would say that that could be explained by that it's a cultural thing within the U.S. and it's a preference within the U.S. If you look at Europe, for example, they don't have genital mutilation at the same rates as the U.S. What's, so the, what's the male population of the United States? I don't know. Over... It's roughly 50-50. I'm not sure. I don't know the male population. Okay, so it's over, I, what is it, 160 million? Okay, yeah, probably, let's, let's just okay. assume that most of those men, maybe 80, 90% of those men, mm -hmm. had a circumcision. Okay, so that's a lot of men. But that's women's fault? I'm not saying so it's women's women. fault. Well, Actually, like it's like a bias because of, well, I mean, you know what I mean? It's, well, it's like, why, why are you coming in with the framework that it's either men or women's I mean, fault? That's a Maybe it's just. You guys are coming up. No, 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 no. no. I'm we're not, I'm we're not, not actually, making that. I'm actually, yeah, I'm not attributing no. fault. Yeah. I'm just saying, if we're talking about these negative outcomes yeah. impact this group of people, right. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, I mean, do you, do you, would you agree with me that circumcision is actually a gendered issue? I would argue that circumcision specifically would be in the case of the U.S. In other instances, female genital mutilation mm. does occur in other like third developed countries. It happens in different third developed countries. Not at so similar rates. Not at not, similar and rates. I didn't say that. I just said it also occurs to women at different rates. I don't think I was making that argument. Okay. If I'm cool. Correct. Yeah. It and happens it's not to the same yeah, reason. Bad for women at too. Can time, you say that it's bad for men? I am not incredibly familiar on the practice of genital mutilation for men. It's okay, but it's what do you mean you're not thing. familiar with the practice? Like, I know what it is, you but know I, what it is. I'm not super, super in-depth researched on it, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. I mean, obviously nobody's... So do you think that, I mean, <laughs> so obviously what? that, obviously baby boys can't consent to this procedure? That's not okay for any gender to have to go through. Okay, but, but if we're talking about the United that's States, that's a societal. Okay, I, will say about the United like, States. I agree, it's not okay for any gender to go through. But I, I want to make sure we agree on the definition of gendered issue before I make my statement. Right? You would argue that a gendered issue is something that occurs to one gender at a much, much higher frequency than the other. Correct? Like circumcision. Uh, I'll grant it. Sure. Yes, like circumcision happens to men at a much higher rate. So therefore, it is a gendered issue, right? Well, no, no, it doesn't happen to men at a much higher rate. It can only happen yeah. to men. Yeah. I mean, 
Well, so what, how is the yes, circumcision argument? specifically, genital mutilation can happen to both mm. genders, right? But we're talking okay. about circumcision sure. specifically. I'll grant yeah. It. yeah. Yes, then I would say that that specifically is a gendered issue. I agree with you on that. I do. But that has okay. to do with the like medical issues men experience more, or no? Well, it's mostly uh, it's it? mostly a religious pastime for circumcision, yeah. right. which was which was indeed adopted culturally. Right. But if you're not familiar with the practice, they cut the foreskin yeah. of a baby's penis off. I essentially, know. that's what happens. And in a lot of cases, it's it. it the downside of that is like less sensation or things like that, like have that I've read up on and have. Mm -hmm. But what what is that like? The relevance. Right. Well, talking. Brian's argument here is that men overwhelmingly experience this; they can't consent to it. It happens to them when they're children, and it seems that um, as far as issues go, if you if if truly feminism was about equally attacking these types of issues, mm -hmm. which exist. Um, which are left on us by the patriarchy. Certainly, gender mutilation of men would be one thing, but you never really hear feminists talk about it at all. There's no right. policy prescriptions whatsoever which is ever advocated by them towards men. They seem to just not give a shit. Because aren't the fathers also like involved in that decision? Mothers, like, well, the thing is, is, this is interesting. As single motherhood has been on the climb, guess what? Circumcision still stays at about the same rate. And so, no, mothers are every bit as responsible for this as fathers. Yeah. Okay. I would... That's and hard. also, aren't... I, uh, I don't know the specific statistics on this, but I think it's OBGYNs who perform the circumcision and OBGYNs are predominantly, I think, predominantly women. I would agree. I think they are, yeah. Mm. And they're probably advocating if, they're, if their patient comes to them, well, should I have my... Um, male child circumcised they will probably make a recommendation for circumcision yeah and i think that too but i'm not actually trying don't to point they do the that finger. i'm not yeah. actually even trying to point the finger yeah i'm, at I'm men or at, at women i'm just saying this is a negative outcome, outcome that yeah. impacts men i misunderstood that no, part. anyways I but i don't want to linger on the circumcision for too long but i i'm still again when it comes to discrimination, I've not really heard a compelling argument. And I'll I just actually, I'll just show my cards. I actually think men have been more oppressed than women. Okay. Historically and currently. Can I say one more thing about that? And no, I'd actually like it? her to respond to my no, statement I, here. I want to know like why you think that. Like I'm curious mm -hmm. about your perspective. <laughs> yeah, so I could list a whole bunch of things. Okay. I could talk about the self-deletion rate, homelessness. Men are much more, met, excuse me, much less likely to go to college. Uh, I'm trying to think what are some of the, uh, I mean, there's the circumc circumcision thing. That's very big, but I'm actually going to hyper-focus and zero in on just one sole male grievance. And mm. that comes down to, and I actually think that this one, any sort of feminist argument is dead on arrival when it comes to, uh, at least from a comparison perspective. So forced mili military conscription throughout history and current day, I think is a bigger grievance that's for most of human history, nearly exclusively has been placed on men, is a far bigger grievance, gender grievance, than really, I would argue, all of women's collective grievances combined. But, okay. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I'd be open to uh, hearing you actually articulate one female grievance that's greater than forced military conscription. In fact, you can have three. You can combine three, and we'll just add them up. Just add them up? Sure. Okay. And are we talking, like, present day, but we're talking historical right now, too? Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, I would argue the exclusion of women voting forced marriages and exclusion from like education historically. Okay. So I should have just stuck to one, but if, okay, if you had to pick, I, I can actually, I'll tackle all three, but if okay. you had to pick one, would it be voting? It would be, I think it's really hard to compare these because, but that's the, that's the game of feminism. I, Women have it worse than men. I that think, is feminism. I think that we have two different definitions of feminism personally. What's your definition? My definition of feminism is 
reaching a point where like men and women can see each other's perspectives and work towards solutions that benefit both of us. That's